probably nothing more important at all, more so than earnings. I want to mention this about earnings before we get too far. As traders of the S&P, NASDAQ, Dow, earnings typically do not, and I, I say typically because I'm sure there's going to be or there might have been an, an exception in the past, but they typically do not change the trend of the market. Earnings, as much as they are paid attention to, uh, are not really significant market movers. They really not are not. The thing that moves the market is the FOMC. The next meeting we have is February 1. You can see that we're absolutely positively going to get to the four and a half to four and three quarter column. The terminal rate seems still to be one hike away. That next hike is coming in March, according to the Fed Fund Futures, which is what you see in front of you. There is still, and this is going to keep equities from being too giddy, there is still a lower possibility of another quarter point hike in May. Because this, as of March, is going to be accomplished. That means that May is still more likely to be a hold than a hike. But there is, it, this is not a negligible amount of expectation gain. So there is a definite possibility that we could see the five to five and a quarter. And then we go out to June, July, September. Where do we finally step off that four and three quarters to 5%? November, December. So hikes will likely end in March with maybe another hike in May. But by the time we get out to December, we're expecting rates to be either at four and a half to four and three quarters or four and a quarter to four and a half. This column would represent two quarter point cuts. This column here would represent one quarter point cut, but we are mostly expecting cuts come November, come December. The only reason we keep an eye on what's going on on the economic calendar, inflation numbers, jobs numbers, growth numbers, is because those numbers map to, oh, I didn't mean to minimize that. Those numbers map to this, the, the, the main and and some really, in some ways, we could say the only macro that matters. What is the FOMC going to do? So that's the first look at a bigger picture. If we're already talking about the potential for these, these cuts, in a big way, let's talk about the corners of the indices and treasuries that we need to keep an eye on. And I'm going to go to the daily time frame. All right. Bonds are trying to do two things. Get over the 200 propulsion. They have not yet. And it is definitely trying to organize into an uptrend. We have persisted in every time we pull back ever since this low back in November and October, this is the lowest low. This is a slightly higher low. We move higher. This is a higher low. It's a heck of a pullback, but it is a higher low compared to the ones that came before it. It does appear the longer that we continue to bounce off the daily price movement range, the longer we continue to bounce off the daily price movement range, the more likely this green momentum is going to usher in a transition to green on the trend. If bonds continue to move higher, that is yields moving lower, and equities are going to like that. The idea that equities and indices move in, uh, indices, sorry, indices and treasuries, the idea that bonds in S&P, for example, bonds in the Dow, bonds in the NASDAQ, notes of the NASDAQ, move opposite is, is pretty incorrect, seeing how Lower yields are very, very friendly to stocks. Cheaper money is friendly to stocks, all right? 
Gold continues to move higher, and that's definitely going to be a buy the dip opportunity. Silver is not the trend that it once was. I would avoid silver, and I would replace that with copper. But these are just some general commodities that I think are worth keeping an eye on. So that's the indices. Quick look at the treasuries. I would say that being bullish on indices is really going to be predicated on copper moving higher and bonds moving higher. But what about our currencies? We've talked quite a bit about the fact that if we want to know where the dollar is going, look no further than the 6E. And as long as the 6E remains in an uptrend, dollar will remain in a downtrend. This is nearly 58% of the US dollar index. This is a far better way of looking at the dollar than looking at things like DXY or even UUP or even for those of you that even have access to this thing, DX. Most of us do not. I do, but that's the ICE, and that's a very expensive exchange. I'll show it to you from time to time, but what do I focus on? 6E. It's a better way to understand what the dollar is doing. This uptrend north of the 200 continues to tell us we want to buy the dip in the euro. We want to sell the rip in the dollar. Well, let's go back to treasuries. Yields are moving lower. Gold is moving higher. That means real interest rates are moving lower. Dollar, weak, bonds, strong, meaning lower yields, and gold moving higher. This is, this is the foundation for more risk appetite to come, gang. And I trade the right now. I don't trade the what ifs. We don't, we don't predict and prognosticate. This is what we see. This is what we'll trade. And then it's our job to find the relative outperformers, All right? So we talked about rate cut and rate hike expectations. What are the four corners of the market we need to keep an eye on? So again, or I shouldn't say four, indices, treasuries, currencies. We took a look at metals too. So I guess you could say four corners. Metals, you know, specifically gold and copper. Treasuries, the long bond and the 10-year, right? Currencies, really, frankly, the euro. Look, if the yen wants to continue to weaken, that's 6J, great. It doesn't hurt us. But this makes the yen look strong, when in reality, I would not say it is. This looks, makes the yen look strong. Uh, remember, we, dollar weakness can make the yen look stronger than it is. And, and just to make sure everybody knows where we are on those volume anchors, I just want to make sure it's super clear. Here we are in January 24. I have, as of the Monday, yesterday, anchored to uh, January 3, 2023, for both the V-score and that would, by the way, include the V-score bands. So how do you do that? You right-click the V-score bands and then, oh, that's intraday, don't want to do that. If you have the V-score bands running on your daily time frame. Go into the V-score bands and update also that one to the third. Why the third? That was the first trading day of the year. You'll see the V-score bands and the V-score must be anchored to the same date. Otherwise, they're not reflecting each other, which is the whole point of having the V-score bands and the V-score. And then I've also anchored the VWAP to, the to that same date, January 3, 2023. So we, we've gone ahead and done that update. There's no harm in keeping an anchored VWAP to last year, January 3, 2022. If you'd like to do that, that's fine. But the more we progress into Q1, the less I'm going to be concerned about that and more interested in what the first or the you know first trading of day of this year forward is telling us about volume derived support and resistance. And based on that, if you take a look at the S&P, NASDAQ, we are above the anchored VWAP on the first of the year, gang. We're above it on the S&P. We're above it on the Dow. Heck, we're even trying to get above it. Um, well, actually, we got above it on the NAS. Yep. And we're, and we're actually, interestingly enough, the strongest of the indices, the Dow. Go figure. But yeah, we're even above back above that too. So there we go. That is what we're dealing with right now in terms of the bigger picture, as we wrap up the first, we're getting very close to wrapping up this first 
month of the year. That is where we sit. Those are adjustments we're making. We're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit more about adjustments in just a moment. I'm gonna talk about the one hour time frame. So that'll be the next topic. The one hour is, is something that we're gonna talk a lot about as we go into February, because one of the things that we're gonna do a lot more of is look at the DPMRs on the one hour chart. What is the one hour? This is not day trading, gang. If I'm day trading, I'm on a five minute chart. The one hour is gonna give us a time horizon of about one to three days, maybe sometimes more, but it's gonna give us the ability to take shorter overnight positions. So these are overnight positions, right? Let us take shorter overnight positions and the cool thing is a lot of folks have asked me, Rob, what about earnings? You know, is there a way to look at Microsoft or Apple? And, and we'll, we'll talk a lot more about these in terms of what the one hour can do for us going into 2023. Hey traders, Roggy from Simpler Trading. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like and a comment below. And remember, subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll get notified of the next update. And when you're ready to join me for live trading, be sure to head on over to simplertrading.com. I'll see you in the next update.